So you're planning your first or your next trip to Japan and you want to make it an epic one, but you don't know how much it's going to cost you or what to expect. Lucky for you, we just spent 21 days here and documented everything. Get ready to do Japan for cheap. Megan and I spent a total of $2,735.21 for this three-week trip and we have a breakdown for you along with useful tips that we learned along the way. Use this video as a guide when building out your itinerary. Keep in mind that these numbers are for two people, so some things like the food, transportation, and attractions will be half if you're going alone. We also aren't covering flights as this depends on where you're coming from and what deals you can get. We didn't cover souvenirs as well as that is up to personal preference, but you will probably be getting yourself some cool items, so leave a little bit of room in your budget for that. Now, let's go over some key things that will help you guys when planning your trip to Japan. You need to think about how you're going to get around, where you'll be staying, and what you're going to eat. Also, we went in the fall to see the beautiful colors, and we recommend you do the same. A good time to get here is around early November. Coming in the spring is also a really good option. Transportation is up first. The public transportation system in Japan is one of the best and most efficient in the world. You have two options here that most people use. You can use the local trains, subways, and buses, or you can use the Japan Rail Pass system. That one is really popular and gives you access to the fastest trains that will save you hours plus access to any JR local trains. The JR Pass is also really great for round trips. We chose to stick to the local trains, subways, and buses because they give us access to more than just the main big cities. Plus they were cheaper and we didn't need any round trips as we were flying into Tokyo and then flying out from Osaka at the end of our trip. Also, a lot of places in Japan are very walkable. So that's what we did since it's free and it's also good for you. Even though their public transportation systems are near perfect, make sure to spend your first day really understanding how the ticketing system works and learning the maps. If you need any help, all the stations usually have a booth by the gates where you can ask someone for help. As for buses, there will usually be bus stations near the train stations for you to purchase your tickets at when moving between cities. For accommodations, the affordability will largely depend on the city and location within the city, as well as the type of place you're staying at. You can stay in something with a bit more luxury, something more middle of the road, or something really cheap like a hostel. We chose to stay at places that were more in the middle while still trying to save money since we were more interested in being out and about instead of the places we were going to be staying at. We also chose to stay as close to train stations as possible to make it easy to get around. To find these places, we recommend using Agoda.com and Airbnb. But Agoda is probably where we found the best deals and then we used their review systems to make sure the places were mostly what we were looking for. Although we did have a hiccup in Tokyo that we'll get to later. Oh yeah, and also keep in mind that some hotels will charge you by the person. So if you're more than one person, make sure to state that online or they'll make you pay an extra fee at the counter. When it comes to food, you will not be short of options here. There are so many different types of foods to try in Japan and a lot of different price points as well. Overall, we found it very affordable to eat in Japan, but we also like to save money where possible, so we got a tip for you guys. If you really want to save while traveling around Japan, your favorite places are going to be convenience stores like 7-Eleven, Family Mart, and Lawson's. These put our convenience stores in the US to shame. They have fresh food made every day and a huge variety of it on top of fun Japanese snacks to try. We usually ate here during the day while exploring and then left room in our budget to try a few restaurants as well as try all the different street foods whenever we were in the mood for it. We started our trip in the futuristic fast-paced city of Tokyo and stayed there for five nights. We recommend staying at a centrally located area like Shibuya or Shinjuku if possible. We personally stayed in Shinjuku and found it to be very fun with easy access to everything. If you like nightlife, this is the place for you. On hotels, we spent $351.31. On food, we spent $105. On transportation, we spent $34. On attractions, we spent $84.89. Here's where we had our first hiccup. Tokyo is one of the pricier cities when it comes to hotels and Airbnbs. We wanted to stay under $100 a night and if possible closer to $50 or lower without sleeping in a hostel or capsule hotel. We did, but we had a mix up of one of the two hotels we stayed at. Even though we chose a non-smoking room through Agoda, we still got one as the hotel was entirely a smoking hotel. We were told it was quite common here. We sucked it up since we're frugal like that, but the next time we would probably spend a little bit more to avoid that situation entirely. 
After Tokyo, we took a bus to Nagano to spend one night there. We got to explore, try unique foods, and see the beautiful Zenkoji Temple. There are also Japanese snow monkeys that like to bathe in the hot springs nearby at the Snow Monkey Park. Here we tried out staying at a hostel to save money, and even though we did, and it was memorable, we'll probably stay at a hotel next time. On the hostel, we spent $62.58. On food, we spent $60. On transportation to get here, we spent $69 for the bus from Tokyo. On attractions, we spent $53.44. On the way to our next destination, we made a pit stop at Matsumoto to explore for a bit before getting on to our next city, Takayama, where we spent three nights. It's famous for its Samachi Suji Historic District, which is lined with wooden merchant houses dating back to the Edo period. We recommend the Takayama Wan Hotel if you're staying here. It was very affordable, the rooms were clean, traditional, yet modern, and the best part, there are onsens. These are pretty much relaxing tubs with nice views on the roof that you get to use. There are private and public ones too. On the hotel, we spent $143.55. On food, we spent $105. On transportation, we spent $84 for the buses plus some trains. And on attractions, we spent $107. Little hidden gem for you to check out here. If you want to have some amazing traditional Japanese sushi, we have a great spot for you near the hotel. Look up the Naniwa Sushi Restaurant on Google Maps and get there as soon as possible for a nice traditional dinner. After a memorable time in Takayama, we made our way over to Kanazawa, the home of the samurai, for another three nights. We got lucky and found another great hotel in a great location, but this one was even more affordable than any of the others. We stayed at the Unizo Inn, it was also less than a block from a 7-Eleven, and you know how much we love those. On the hotel, we spent $108.42. On food, we spent $100. On transportation, we spent $51. On attractions, we spent $0 since most of what we explored was free. We hope you're finding this useful for your trip to Japan. If you are, please make sure to give us a like and a subscribe. It will help us in making more content for you guys. Now, it was time for one of the heavy hitters of Japan the famed city of Kyoto, where we stayed for three nights. You'll want to make the most of your time here as there is way too much to see. This is probably where we spent the most for a hotel and ours wasn't even anything special. You would walk in and basically fall into the bed. The price is totally worth it though as Kyoto is a showcase of some of the best that Japan has to offer in terms of culture and atmosphere. On the hotel, we spent $302.36. On food, we spent $90. On transportation, we spent $110, and on attractions, we spent $89.10. One thing you need to do here is you need to try all the food, all of it. Enjoy the street food and find as many restaurants to try as possible. We found Kyoto had some of the best. And don't worry about gaining weight as you'll probably be doing a lot of walking like we did. This next place was very special. We spent one night at a Buddhist temple with the monks in Koyasan. We recommend you do the same if you decide to come here as well. You get to get up early with them and participate in the morning prayer. And if you want, you can add breakfast, lunch, or dinner to your stay. Since we were trying to stick to a budget, we didn't do that, but we regret not doing at least one of these meals to really enhance our experience. For one night at the Buddhist temple, we spent $76.05. On food, we spent $35. On transportation, we spent $40. On attractions, we spent zero since most of the places are usually free to visit, but we did make some donations to some temples. While there's a lot of temples and museums to visit here, make sure not to miss the Okanoin Cemetery. It's the most beautiful one we've ever seen and I can't even begin to explain to you in words how magical it was. After Koyasan, we made our way to Japan's kitchen, Osaka, where we spent our last five nights. We enjoyed our stay at the Osaka Ibisu Hotel. The location was great as it was right near Denden Town in the Shinsekai district, so there was always something to do nearby. It was very cheap, but again, make sure to ask for non-smoking rooms as this place has both types. Osaka is also very well located, so we were able to take a day trip to see the world famous Bowing Deer in Nara. It was only about 45 minutes away, so make sure not to miss it. On the hotel, we spent $261.04. On food, we spent $190. On transportation, we spent $80. On attractions, we spent $159. We spent a bit more on food and attractions here because we decided to go to Universal Studios Japan to see Super Nintendo World. The entrance to the tickets alone were $60 for each of us, and we spent another $30 on a wristband to do this. We hope this breakdown of our expenses during our trip to Japan was useful for you when planning out your own trip. Our first trip to Japan was so special to us. There is still so much to see of this beautiful country that we didn't have time for, so we'll be coming back for sure. 
Want to see what each of these places has to offer in more detail? Check out our Japan playlist from our trip to see more.